Hey everybody, it's your boy String Bean Mountain Bushcrafters Alliance, obviously. Got you with me down here in the lower garden. Dry today. Not supposed to be hot. An excellent day to get some things done. Uh, give you some updates on how things are looking. Obviously the ground temperature has got to warm up. But uh, we've got some growth going on. I'm excited about that. But today, I'm going to try to show you how you can wildlife proof your garden steps you can take now i'm not saying it's 100 percent foolproof but things that you can do that might help keep the critters out of your food stick around stay with me let's get busy standing down here at the corner of my garden how beautiful nevertheless let's get busy uh got some growth I want to show you what's going on before we get started. Right there. These are the improved large cucumbers. Don't see none there. Don't see any there? Nope. Oh, right over right here. All this is looking good. Now, if you remember, the first five are the improved. Oh, buddy. Look at that. And these last five are the Boston Pickling. Right now, them little sprouts are vulnerable. All right, here we go now. Here we go. The Boston Pickling. They're coming on now. Oh, they're coming on now. <laughs> All the way out here. What, what are you doing out there, buddy? Anywho, I'm going to show you how to crow proof as best you can. There's a, a lot of steps you can take, and I'm going to use them every one. Every one. Uh, to try to wildlife proof this garden. Okay? And uh, we're gonna finish up that bed and uh, bird proof it. You see the issue is, when them sprouts start coming up, critters start coming in. That's just the way it is. I've got electric fence, like I said, around this garden, but sometimes that's just not enough. Huh? And we want to try to keep the wildlife from taking our food. So stick around, stay with me, let's get busy. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna sow me some seed right here. And uh, we'll fix this up. Stay with me. If you don't have a thatch rake, you got a small garden doing small beds like this. Look at that. That's a whole lot better than just a to me than just a rake. Cuts in pots up, see. Don't cut up from jail there. Them tines are sharp now. I mean, they should be, or could be a little sharper, but I guess this thing's ever been sharpened. They still make them, like I said. You don't have one. My advice you is get you one. Up. 
hold up a while. You got to go two days. Uh, yeah. Seriously, stay with me. I'm not going to ramble, I'm not going to keep this long. We got a lot of work to do. Look at that. I'll put a before and after. Stay with me. Look at that. It looked like that. You want it as fine as possible. Softer the sole, better the growth, quicker the growth. But uh, stay with me. Oh yeah now, got our netting in place. Huh? That'll keep the critters out of that bed. Crow, red-breasted robin, chimney sweeps, blue jays, cardinals, whatever. Rabbits, coons, turkey. That will allow me to get that seed in the ground. I may change some things, may not. You know? I'll consider it. But if I was going to grow a tall plant, like a tomato or a specialty plant that grows kind of tall, I would have arched that netting with some black pipe. All you got to do is put your two screws in it, take it over to the other side, arching it, put your two screws. Do that about four or five times down through there, and then tie it in the top of one long piece. Punch your heading over it. There you are. You got an arched, raised bed. But I'm just growing mustard, lettuce, and kale. And I don't want it to grow no taller than that board. If it's as tall as that board, it's too tough to eat. Let's get some seed in the ground. That's one step. Stay with me. Here we go. I've got just a little bit of kale. 
It's mostly mustard and lettuce. Appalachians love blanched mustard, lettuce, and onions with hot bacon grease. Mm-hmm. Like a comfort food. It's like planting. That little dandelion growing out in your yard. The leaves off that in the springtime. Mm-hmm. Planting. Plantain. Some people call it, we don't call it plantain. We call it planting. It's good stuff. There we go. Uh, the reason I soften that soil up, make it fresh, I've already fertilized that. Fertilizer's in the ground, we've got seed in the ground. Let's move on to them mounds right there, show you what we're going to do. Stay with me. Oh, well, there we go. I've got a trucker's heat on that end. And I can tighten that juke one up as need be. But uh, you want it tight, but you don't want it so tight that the birds are comfortable in sitting there. Huh? Now, go in between your mounds. And put up ribbon or uh, that's what you can do with your, your husband or your boyfriend's backer can lids. Hmm? Something that blows in the wind, something moving about all the time. Old mason jar lids, ones you can't use, ones you can't can with. Now you could probably reuse really them to put up beans and rice and dry goods but as far as canning no so put your in between your mounds tie ribbon and lids and such pie pans pie pans are excellent Old cheap pie pans a little bit a little bit of cheap pie pans right between them mounds and be moving all the time say don't have to worry about it so that should protect them cucumbers. Should. Nothing's 100% foolproof out here. Trust me. Stay with me. Let me give you a better looking view than me. You don't have to be looking at me to hear me, I don't reckon. But, uh, let's talk about checking the quality of seed before you put it in the ground. See if it's properly germinated. See if it's going to take root and grow even if you bought it from a reputable company you still may have an issue uh, you want to know what you're putting in the ground before you go through all that work all that effort wasting fertilizer wasting your work time and effort only to plant your corn and it not come up you're doing the same thing Every year, but it just didn't come up. Hmm. The way to check your seed is to get you a couple of kernels of that seed. Put it in a wet paper towel, fold it up, and put it in a warm environment. If that seed cracks open and starts to sprout, you're good to go. If it's laid there for a week and it ain't done nothing, you better not put that seed in the ground. You're wasting a whole lot of effort, a whole lot of 
fertilizer and work. Thankfully, that hasn't happened to me yet. I hope it don't. I hope it don't happen. Period. But I uh, had a friend that pushed off a bunch of rows of corn, and he done the same routine as always. He planted. Nothing happened. He checked the germination of the seed that he bought, and it didn't sprout. It laid there for probably two weeks. So check the germination of your seed. Check, make sure you got good quality seed, regardless of where you buy it. Let's talk about steps you can take to protect your crop. Stay with me just a minute. Now, each row is 150 feet. I got four rows of corn here. I got two rows of potatoes. I don't know what stage of growth they're in. But the first thing I look for, see, that, see them cracks right there in that row? There's no cracks in the furrow walkway. We call it a furrow. There's cracks in that row. It makes me to know something's working. That's what I look for. That's the first thing I look for. It's not dry down here, so, you know. Maybe something's moving. See what I'm saying? Now, we've got rain to forecast. But I want to try to do what I can to protect that seed my crop and the last thing you want to do is come down here right after it rains tromping around stomping around and trying to do something all you're doing is making a mess you're not helping a thing and i can hear my daddy say right today god rest his soul buddy stay out of the garden and quit gumming it up gumming it up quit making a mess Uh, but after you come down here after a rain and you see a few sprouts here and there, there, and there, and there sporadic, and you go down to there and it's been dug up by a crow, crows are raving, they're smart, they'll figure it out. If they find one kernel, they'll dig the rest of it up. They sure will. And I'm going to show you a, a quick, simple way to make a scarecrow. People go all elaborate. You can do them however you want to do them. That's fine. That's fine and dandy. But I'm going to show you a quick, simple easy way to make a scarecrow and some of the things that we do around here in Appalachia to keep the crows out of the garden hmm so stay with me now one of the things that Appalachians do kill crows catch it in season catch them in your garden they're, they're a free game hmm Anything that destroys your property in the state of Kentucky, unless it's a bear or elk or something like that, then that's up to you. But a uh, beaver, crow, raccoon, free game if it's destroying your property. So what we Appalachians do is we'll kill us two or three crow. A crow's tough to kill, I'm going to tell you. It was, ah, oh, you can kill a crow any day of the week. Go ahead. Send me a few. But anyway, we kill a few crow. We'll put one right there in the middle of the garden, high in the air on a cane pole, tie him up. And we tie one on each end of the garden. Some people say, ah, oh, it don't work. It works. Trust me, it works. I don't know if it just... They see that crow, because they watch each other all the time. You ever notice a bunch of crows being on the side of the road or out in the field, and you've got one or two up in the trees watching? When a crow's dead, you won't hardly ever see a crow around. Not on the road. Mm -mm. That's one of the things. But making a scarecrow is another. And that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to show you a quick, easy, simple way to make a, a scarecrow. Stay with me. 
with just a few materials, I'm going to show you how to throw up and create a good, effective, simple scarecrow. Okay? Now, however you make your scarecrows, if they work, stay with that. But try this out and throw your next one in your garden. Just easy. All you'll need is a, uh, either a hoodie or a jacket with a hood on it. A couple of poles and some juke twine. That's all you need. No more, no less. Uh, the color you decide to use is entirely left up to you. How elaborate you want to make it is entirely left up to you. I choose orange because a bear, coyote, turkey, raccoon. With a deer, it doesn't matter what color, but they still see the silhouette. Hmm? So, let me get you a better view, and I'll show you how we throw this up. Stay with me just a minute. Now, if you want to drive your pole, your hay rake, cane pole in the ground, that's, that's perfectly fine. I've got a driver pole here. Already got it in the ground. All you gotta do is slide that pole right up into that hood. Just like that right there. Put it back to the back and tie it off. You don't have to have it so tight uh, that it looks odd. You can put you a, a ball up in there and if you want to have a round shaped head or whatever you know take your stick and stick it up in there whatever whatever you want to do right there it's entirely up to you however elaborate you want to make it entirely up to you now stretch him out stretch them arms out okay stretch them arms out like so slide this your second pole the sleeves get started there. There we go. all the way across all across the chest all the way out the other side huh what look like a scarecrow already thing about this is move with the wind See the wind coming through here, he'll, he'll, he'll move. Ain't no wind, can't do nothing moving, right? I'll take my Leatherman, my multi-tool, whatever you got, and I'll put the excess of that pole off. But here's where the kicker is. You gotta tie and then stretch them all the way out. No, I don't got to tie another head off. Whoa, oh, 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 baby. Show you what we got stolen. There you are. Watch this. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. Tie his arms out, stretch them out. He moves with the wind. Yeah, he swivels. That's all you gotta do. That's it. <laughs> Sit wind moving. That's just a slight breeze. Five minutes. <laughs> and instead of a cane pole, you can just, I could have stopped that in the ground because that ain't going to make the difference in the movement any whatsoever. See him moving? And that's not going to make a difference in the movement regardless. But he's right over top of everything. So, And that driver pole is good in the ground. It's, it's deep, so watch him. That's a simp simple, 
quick, effective scarecrow. That's all. He's moving into the end. Instead of a stable scarecrow, you've got a moving scarecrow. Might be a couple more. Put me one right here. It might be one down there next to my planter box. Or next to the entrance of the field. You can put them effortless. You can put one on all four corners of the field plus some across each other. Go to the good wind, get you some hoodies. Go to your closet and get you some old worn out jackets that you don't use anymore. Moving in the wind. Instead of a stable, solid, non-moving scarecrow, and just a little bit of material in 10 minutes I've got a moving scarecrow up high kind of freaky looking there he is now you can take a Two liter, like I said about a, uh, being a leverage, you can take a, a two liter uh, soda bottle, we call them pop bottles, put it on top of that uh, center pole. That'll save that from wiring into the top of that hoodie. See what I'm saying? That'll help him to be more mobile. And that'll give him some contour on top of that head. Simple fix. Put gloves on him. Put some uh, twirly birds on each end of the pole. Or pinwheels. I call them twirly birds. They're pinwheels. Just put them, mount them on the side of them poles. Tape them or shove them down that hole and tape them or do whatever. That'll be that much more movement, see. Make them as elaborate as you want to. Nevertheless, let's get busy. Talk about... Another line of defense. Huh? We know, or I know, you probably don't know, but I know, that that electric fence will uh, make your toes tangle. Uh, that, that the other day. But, uh, deer, see those, that tape, they come up here, they just hop across, go on in and eat your beans. Hmm? Let's talk about another line of defense right here. My hammer. Oh. 3D effect. They can't see it. That's a good thing. They don't need to see it. And don't need to be much. Just a touch, because they're nervous. Do you see it now? 50 pound test fishing line just on the outside of that electric fence huh I touch it they can't figure it out what it is they, they don't know where to jump I mean it's not foolproof but still that's another line of defense People have tried soap. I've tried soap. Some say it works. Some say it doesn't. Take you some uh, strong scented zest or, or uh, lava or Irish spring and 
walk around the edge of your garden, just whittle on a bar of it as you're checking things out. Huh? Coyote smell it, they go that way. Deer smell it, they go that way. Some of them do, some of them won't. The enticement is them beans and corn and sprouts, them young tender plants. They come up here and they touch this. I can't figure out what it is. I see that wire because of those. But you can't see this. Nighttime. So they try to step through. They touch that. His zippy doo da. I'm telling you, it is zippy doo da. So let's get busy and put some fishing line out. That's another line of defense. Try it. What's it going to hurt? The more you put out as a barrier or protector of your crop, the more likely you're going to be successful in your season. Stay with me. 25 pound test, 590, five yards. Huh? All I gotta do is touch it. What? Eleven dollars? Eleven dollars a little bit of work? What's it worth? I'm gonna get me a strand right there at the main bottom. Right down on the main bottom. A little bit closer to the to the ground. I want one above that electric fence and down below that electric fence. Huh? Put one way down here for the coons and the coyotes and whatnot. Come crawling across the field and touch that. Maybe deter, maybe not. But like I said, for $11 and a little bit of effort, what's it worth to you to save your beans and your corn? Yeah. Stay with me. Fishing for deer 101. You've got a 3D effect. And I'll be honest with you, looking at it, you don't look like it probably on camera, but it kind of messes with your eyes, with your mind, because you're looking at the fishing line, there's a line beyond that. Huh? Deers can't see the fishing line, no. They can see them little green tags, but they can't see the fishing line. And I ain't totally ignorant, I know they can jump it. It ain't but what, three foot? Three and a half foot off the ground. Four strands. But for those that want to go under, nope, not going to happen. What I'll do is I'll branch off that hot wire right there and drop it down about eight inches. Yet again, running another uh, hot wire of electric fence around my garden. About eight inches. But when you walk up to that and see that, it does kind of mess with your mind. You really don't know where it's at. You know where it's at, but you don't know where it's at. <laughs> I get it. Let's look at things kind of rational, okay? A lot of people say, oh, this, this, this works, that works. Oh, I promise this works. Oh, I've tried it and it works. I've got a no-fail plan and, and my ideas work. You know, clickbait, junk like that. But uh, I'm guilty of it somewhat as a creator. But there's no promises when you're looking at that out there to keep deer and bear, turkey, crow out of your garden. There's deterrence, now I believe in that, like the fishing line. And like I said, looking at it, it does kind of mess with your mind because it gives you a 3D effect. You know, there's lines there, but you just really don't know how many. <laughs> Stop and count them. I know there's... Uh, four on the outside and one on the inside so deterrence hopefully that deer that decides to crawl under 
get spooked away. That electric fence, that's a great deterrent. I'll add another strand to that. I'll drop it down about eight inches up off the ground and run it right around through the other same way. A scarecrow. I need about two more. Just like that. High pans. Uh, pinwheels. Garbage bags tied into a tree. Take a garbage bag and tighten this tree right there on this limb. Won't hurt a thing. Won't hurt that tree at all. Crow on a stick. Dude, crow on a stick. I love your garden. One on each end. What's it going to hurt? It's not going to hurt nothing. It might help something. Huh? It might save your beans because there's a lot of work out there, children. <laughs> you know? Uh, a lot of work. Come out there and see a deer in the yard and eat your beans. So I'm going to do all I can, even the soap. Yeah, I'm going to do soap too. I'll get me a couple of bars of strong bath soap. Walk around and look at my garden and just whittle away. Whittle it away. More thing. What you got to lose? What have you got to gain? That's the question. Because the fact of it is, in the season, I want my shelves full. Nevertheless, this is your boy String Bean Mountain Bushcrafters Alliance. I hope some of these ideas kind of helped you. You've got people probably scratching their head, wondering, but that's Appalachian heritage. As always, go farther, stay longer. Hey, I'll catch you. Oh, look at that dog. I'll catch you. Somewhere out there. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get my beats in the ground. Huh? Let's get the beats in the ground. I got a little bit of fertilizer over. Yeah. Let's do this. Stay with me.